So a little bit about treatment. Uh, this is actually pretty simple. Um, basically, you want to use L-thyroxine. Uh, the dosages you'll find generally are 0.02 milligrams per kilogram given once to twice a day. Once a day dosing tends to be adequate for most dogs. Some people want, uh, have suggested the use of per meter squared body surface area dosage, which I've shown here, for very small and very large dogs to under treatment of high, small dogs and over treatment of big dogs. So why is T4 the main treatment? First of all, it's a major product of the thyroid gland. It allows peripheral tissue autoregulation of T3 production, which we talked about. And there are rare indications for the use of T3. In fact, almost none. We really highly discourage the use of T3 for treatment because you're sort of subverting um, many of the physiological changes in regulation. So what, what's important to know is that mo most of those uh, thyroid hormone products that have been uh, produced show fairly sort of moderate bioavailability or absorption range. And the, the most important part of it is that they can range from, in this case, this study, 12 to 55 percent, mean, meaning that a significant proportion of an orally administered dose does not get to, into the circulation. And the main thing is that there can be this four to five fold diff variation from patient to patient. So this leads to the fact that you need to monitor treatment. And again, clinical response is very important. If that's not giving you a clear picture, then measuring total T4 would be indicated only um, when a standard dose of LT4 has not resulted in, in expected clinical improvement because then you can test for poor intestinal absorption um, or occasionally document an animal that might be showing signs of hyperthyroidism. These are, tend to be fairly rare. Uh, dogs tend to take a slight overdose and sort of put it out in the bile and into the feces and not be affected by it. Monitoring TSH is increasing in its use. Um, in other words, you should expect, as we'll show in a minute, that TSH would fall and generally into an undetectable range. But let's first talk about a study that was done many years ago that looked at various oral T4 dosages. And these would show that on the left, you were basically showing what happens at 0, 7, 14, 21, and 28 days. So if you normally would wait until 28 days were probably useful before you start monitoring again, it's, it's useful to show that the um, measurement, and then here I'm showing the reference range, that once a day dosing of a patient with 22S uh, would be here, um, once a day dosing, it gives adequate thyroid hormone values. Um, Twice a day dosing is, you know, slightly higher values, of course, and of course higher doses give higher values, and that almost into the hyperthyroid range. Uh, for, so as far as T4 is concerned, you can keep T4 in the normal range most of the day by a single T4 dosage. But that's not the point. The point is that, um, you know, basically you want to recognize that T4 is acting intracellularly. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's summarize this study. Basically, they found that, we're, that for higher dosages, you had half, shorter half-lives in, in mean residence times, and that suggests higher illumination rates when an animal is uh, given a higher dosage. And that while once-a-day dosing leads to greater fluctuation, by one month of therapy, once a day dosing um, tends to put the animal right at the top of the normal range, so it should be adequate. Uh, 22 microgram per kilogram given once a day maintains serum T4 in the reference range. We talked about TSH, and we've got a graphic of an, a single animal uh, on T4, and we see in red the dosage being administered. And you can see TSH drops and is into the normal range by 14 days. 
take the animal off at about 28, uh, excuse me, 42 days, TSH comes back up, increase the dose intermediately, drops it down, increase it a little bit more, and we drop it again. So we, we have what's, what is it basically a demonstration of a, the biological response to treatment is TSH, and, and probably the TSH can be drawn any time of the day because it's integrating what's being absorbed uh, for T4 all day long. Um, this could be a useful monitoring procedure for those three quarters roughly of hypothyroid dogs that have an elevated TSH upon diagnosis. Um, but the problem is you can't distinguish between a, do a, a dosage that's adequate uh, to cause euthyroidism and one that might be slightly hyper, uh, lead to slight hyperthyroidism. Uh, elevated TSH certainly would lead, be seen with underdosage, however. So the main thing, as you can see from this graphic, is that there's great sensitivity to dosage changes in a given dog. And this is, uh, this is important. So the TSH might be considered as a, as a monitoring procedure once you uh, start treatment. Now, many years ago, it was once, we call this a therapeutic trial, uh, when your diagnostic tests were confusing, they would suggest giving thyroid hormone and see if the animal gets better. Then ultimately, this is a, a test that you should do because you obviously have to treat, and that's the gold standard of whether your diagnostic tests are recognizing hypothyroidism and your treatment of it is reversing it. It's a monomolecular disease for that matter. But you want to use T4 and you want to use objective criteria and be willing to withdraw a hormone if the signs have occurred or the animal never gets better. So there be realized that T4 can have some effects on behavior irrespective of with the animal's hypothyroidism to begin with mild amounts, and definitely on hair coat. So this could be a pharmacological effect of T4 even in a euthyroid patient. So what's the downside? What's the, what's the effect of giving T4 and then finding out you have to withdraw it to do diagnostic testing um, and when that thyroid hormone value has, uh, thyroid treatment has not reversed clinical conditions. In this study, actually shows a shorter period of time than had been thought uh, for the time that you can withdraw thyroid hormone and show the uh, reversal uh, and normalization of T4, free T4, and TSH. And their conclusion was that basically giving, after four months of treatment on a pretty standard dosage once a day, and then four months off, they noticed that free T4, total T4, and TSH were essentially normal, or certainly not, or different from euthyroid values within a week. So there's significant response back to normal of the axis within a week. This is much shorter than we thought. So assessing thyroid function tests a week after cessation of T4 therapy, once a day for up to 16 weeks of treatment, could still provide an accurate assessment of thyroid function if the animal was underlying the euthyroid animal. So that's, that's an important consideration.